Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and with this channel we bring you guys a variety of tech related content. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you're alerted to when new content is being released. In today's video we're going to do a quick setup of the Unify G3 video camera. Alright guys, so we're going to take a quick look at this Unify G3 video camera. Now this is the older model. It's not the newer G3 AF. This one works on 24 volt passive PoE only. Now I'm going to go over some of the specs with you. I'm not going to do a complete unboxing because there's so many videos on YouTube that cover that. But I do want to go over the important specs. So it's 1080p at 30 frames per second. It's got day and night vision with infrared LEDs. It's weatherproof. It's rated for indoor and outdoor use. Built-in microphone. It has power over Ethernet. Again, this model is 24 volt passive PoE, but the newer ones can work on 24 volt passive PoE, as well as 802.3 AF. The package contains the camera itself, a 24 volt passive PoE adapter, power plug, 0.5 amps, wall and ceiling mounting kit, a pole mounting kit, and the quick start guide. In addition to those specs, it does have a 4 megapixel HDR sensor and the lens itself is an EFL 3.6 millimeter with an F stop of 1.8. So now that being said, let's get take a look at some of the mechanical aspects of this camera. All right, guys. So real quick, one other thing I wanted to show you as far as the overall size, the camera does have some weight to it. It's about 10 or 11 ounces. And as far as size, I'm holding up an iPhone 6s plus and you can see overall length in comparison to the iPhone 6s Plus, uh, very similar in overall length. Now behind the camera here, there's a camera lock. If you unscrew that, the actual camera comes off from the mounting hardware. In the back here is where the ethernet uh, port is, where you plug in your cable, and to the left of that, you have your reset button. On the front of the camera, you have your IR sensors for night vision. The way this works here on the back, if you unscrew the locking nut, you have your wall, vertical wall or um, horizontal ceiling mount. So the idea here is if you have your ethernet cable passing through, gets inserted here. And then that attaches like that. And then you see the cable here would plug into the back of the camera like that. And then this gets put back on and tightened down. Now, the camera is pretty versatile. I mean, it does, if it was mounted on a wall, could just flip around like that right if it's mounted on the ceiling again it would just flip around so you know there's a lot of different orientations that you could use with this camera also if you're mounting it outdoors the other end of my cable you could see I have a little like gland on here it came with the uh, camera it was in the box if you're mounting outdoors it's recommended that you put this little gland on your cable and instead of for indoor mounting like this, you would put the gland on the cable and pass it through. And that gland, let me just show you. The gland would pass through and sort of seal off inside there, helping to um, make the waterproofing more effective for an outdoor use. So that being said, that's pretty much how the mechanical aspect of the camera works. Let's get it plugged in and see if we can get it set up. All right, guys. So I checked my Unify controller. I went to the devices tab just to get the IP address of the camera so that I can point the browser to the login page. So all I did was open up my Chrome browser and typed in the address of 192.168.25.151 and it brought me to the camera's login page. Of course, in your own environment, the IP address will be 
whatever your network uh, IP scheme is. So that being said, let's log in using the default username and password. And in this case, it's UBNT, UBNT, because this is the first time I'm doing this out of the box. And that being said, guys, this camera is an older camera. I've had it about a year. I've done nothing with it. I had good intentions to do some videos on it, but then I got wrapped up in other things and the camera just sat on the shelf. So I decided to finally break it out and do it. So that's why I'm doing it on the older camera. If you're wondering why it's, I'm doing it on that version and not the newer um, G3 AF, etc. So that's why I figured I have it. Let's, let's at least get a video out on it. So let's log in with the default credentials. And again, if you're doing this in a production environment or even in your home, just change the credentials to something um, obviously stronger than the default. So let's click login. And it's a rainy day here. Um, it's been raining actually for a couple of days. I just have the camera uh, wedged right now between some shutters and I'll bring up a picture to show you how I have it temporarily set up. So this is a current outdoor look. It's just a snapshot and we're going to continue with the camera setup. So we're going to go ahead and say continue and we have to agree to the uh, license and user license. So we're just going to say accept and now that brings us to the configure page and so here we can give it a name so uvc g3 and i'll call it um, test configuration the language is english we're going to leave it you can set it to france spanish and there's a couple others in there but for the purposes of what we're doing we're going to leave it set to english i will set the time zone let's see nope don't want that and where, where I just saw it there we go New York and we're gonna leave it in mode set standalone I don't have an NVR right now set up on the network so we're just gonna set it up in standalone mode and go ahead and say continue now that's interesting let me refresh this page there we go okay so now we're looking at the live view there goes a car by and it looks here like we can go to full screen yes not bad quality considering it's very dreary and very cloudy out let's bring it back down to regular view and see what some of the other options we have down here Okay, so there's the name of the microphone that I set, uh, name of the camera that I set up in the previous step. The mode is set to stand alone. So we have here enable external accessory. Yeah, I didn't mention this earlier in, in when I was doing the overview of the camera, but it does come with an IR extender. I don't know the price of it. I could put that in the video description down below. But if you put the IR extender on the front rim of the camera, it will enhance the night vision, supposedly. So we'll display the camera name. So now these are all settings, depending on what we want to display in the actual um, field of view. So we'll display the camera name. If we didn't want that, we can just remove it. And there's a logo down in the bottom corner. You can leave that or remove it for the purpose of this video I'm just gonna leave it set to the default we could disable the microphone but in this case I want the microphone enabled now we're getting down to video quality and here you can see um, the resolution in the stream settings so it's set to high 1980 1920 by 1080 but you can reduce that if you want again we'll just leave it set everything's set to the default and we will go ahead and see changes even though I really didn't make any changes. Okay, let's click over here onto the network tab. And here we could just set either a static IP for the camera or leave it at DHCP. Again, for now, I'm just gonna leave it set. DHCP. Let's click over to the system tab and see what we have here. Okay, so here's where you can um, change the username and password again for the purpose of this video I'm just gonna leave everything as is but here's where you can customize the username and password for the camera again you can change the language here's where we have the time zone and the server 
and then here we can upload a firmware version um, if we want we can do a firmware upload if we wanted to so the current version is 3.4.0.59 blah 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 and I'm pretty sure that's going to be out of date because like I said this camera is about a year old so I'm gonna go out to UBN UBNT's website and let's check and see what version we have out there let's go to downloads let's go to unify video let's go to unify g3 and you can see here the two versions of the g3 which is what I have and then the newer g3 af which works on the um, 802.3 af poe as well but we're going to click on the uvc g3 and we see that firmware version 4.4.8 is available. So yeah, we are um, considerably behind, but not surprising. So let's go ahead and click on download. We'll accept the terms. And we're going to go ahead and download the bin file. Okay, let's go back to the camera and let's go to um, choose our firmware file that we just downloaded it should be in my downloads folder uvc there it is let's say open and now it's uploading the file and now it's updating the camera are you sure you want to update the camera if you proceed the camera will be unavailable while the device is updating so yes let's go ahead and say continue and now it's updating the camera I'm going to pause the video guys and come back once the firmware update has completed. Oh, and there we go. Never mind. That was quick. So let's log back in using the default credentials. Actually, the login page came back right away, but I just heard the camera reboot. So again, I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once the camera has rebooted. All right, guys, so the camera should be restarted now. Let's try that login one more time. UBNT, UBNT. And there we go. Okay, so let's just see if anything jumps out at us with the latest firmware actually let's go over to the system and let's make sure that it did update yep and now we're on firmware version 4.4.8 everything pretty much looks the same as far as the interface so I'm really not sure um, what changes um, the newer firmware is bringing to the device but I'll have to uh, look into that and maybe post a uh, update in the comment section yes I'm not it looks exactly the same from what I'm saying so anyway guys that about wraps it up for this video just a quick look at the unified g3 again the older version the newer version now the unified g3 AF supports uh, 802.3 AF PoE so uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what um, type of surveillance system or cameras you guys are using in your own home or in office environments. Please check out some of my other videos up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. And please use those Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.